Hello everyone, this is GhostSquad57 here and today I'm going to show you guys how to create a bridge interface and assign it to QEMU. So the specific uh, reason why I'm creating a bridge network for my use case is that I have an OpenBSD VM and I want that VM to be able to speak with uh, machines in the same network as well as external networks. So I would say for instance if I want to run a web server or an FTP server in OpenBSD uh, the default kind of virtualized environment network emulation thing that QME does kind of uh, containerizes the VM and prevents uh, other server or other systems on the network and external servers to speak to that virtualization, you know, that virtual machine. Uh, there are ways to get around this with the default uh, interface, like for instance. Uh, this is kind of what you would normally do is this here, this host forward thing. And what this does is this says, okay, so whenever you launch the virtual machine, uh, you know, the virtual machine's running something on port 22, and it's TCP. Uh, so take that TCP service that's running on port 22, and then forward it to the host machine on port 2222. And then, you know, your host machine would manage it. You would manage all the firewalling and shit from there, from your host. And then whenever uh, something tries to access that port, it kind of gets redirected to the VM, tunneled through it almost. Um, but I didn't really like that because this means for every time I want to, like, say I want to run FTP or HTTP server or anything like that, I would have to actually kill the VM, go into my little script here I have for launching my virtual machine, and add another host forward section and on and on and on. And on top of that, I didn't want to have to manage the firewalling and all that from the host machine that's running the VM. I, I want the VM to act almost as if a separate, almost as if it's a physical machine. I want other things to be able to see it on the network, you know what I mean? So that way I don't have to like use SCP or something to transfer the files. Maybe I want to do it a different way. Maybe I just want the machine to be visible on the network. And maybe I want to host something on the machine so that way people... Uh, who are connecting to it can use it as like a service, you know. Maybe I want to run, I don't know, a web server on it or just something like that, a game server or something. Um, so I looked into it and the way for actually doing this is what's known as creating a bridged network. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward actually. There's actually a lovely ArchWiki article on it, or ArchWiki page on it. It kind of, there's two sections here that you really have to read. There's a whole section, there's a whole uh, page in the wiki dedicated to network bridging. Um, that's what I'm actually going to be using here to walk you guys through. And then QEMU has a section uh, as well in the Arch Wiki. And there's a section there called Bridge Network, uh, Bridge Networking using QEMU Bridge Helper. That's too is what I'm going to sort of read to you guys and do live in front of you guys so you guys can look at it and be like, oh, okay, cool, that's how you do it. I'll see, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I was actually really surprised with how simplistic and straightforward this is. Uh, so anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is run IPADDR. And this is uh, the IP command is kind of the kernel's way of interacting with the network. Uh, if you're using if config, switch to IP because IP is really, really nice and it's kind of built into the kernel and such a super nice tool. If config is kind of deprecated for the Linux uh, system in my opinion. Um, but yeah, anyway, so here, this gives you a kind of printout of all your uh, interfaces and their IP addresses and et cetera. Uh, one thing you might want to do is you might want to open ETC uh, network and interfaces uh, because what this will, what the interface file does is every time you kind of uh, boot your machine and you, the once it reaches the systemd uh, helper for like all the networking. What it'll do is it'll execute this file and run all the options from here. What I recommend doing is is keeping whatever device you're going to bridge out of this file, right? Because as soon as like you restart your server or whatever happens, it's going to fuck everything up. It's going to assign an IP address to it. It's going to bring the link up. It's going to like detach it from the bridge. Anything can happen, right? So it's better to just keep whatever interface you're going to bridge out of this file, right? You want to do it all kind of manually. Um, and it's not that difficult to do it manually, so don't be scared, right? It's pretty straightforward and pretty simplistic. You can also put your bridging stuff inside the interface itself, the interface file. Um, but we're just going to do it this way because I kind of find it quicker and easier to explain. So the first thing you're going to want to actually do is create the bridge. Creating a bridge is actually super easy. The command, it has to be launched with sudo or any type of uh, root privileges. 
IP link add name and then you're going to type in the name that you want the bridge in my case uh, I tend to recommend BR0 and kind of as you need more bridges kind of uh, you know enumerate higher than that like BR1 BR2 etc I just think that that's a really easy naming scheme and it makes it kind of easier to follow but I already have a BR0 so we're going to name this network bridge BR1 and then you're going to do type bridge and there you go you should now have BR1 under your IP ADDR so the next step is to actually set that link up. So it's pretty simple, sudo ip link set dev, uh, then you're gonna wanna go br1 up. Then when you run that, and then when you run the ip command once again, uh, it might say state unknown, but that's fine for now. Uh, we'll just move on to that. So to add an interface to this bridge, so that way they actually are bridged together, uh, you're going to want to actually make sure the interface that you're going to be bridging it to is up. So if you run IP uh, ADDR, you're going to see under state right here, as you can see, it says state down. So we actually have to bring the interface up before we can kind of bridge it, um, or else it won't be able to talk to it. So we're going to do sudo IP link uh, set dev. Then we're going to go to the link that we want to create the bridge with, and then we're going to do up and hit enter. So then if you run uh, address again, the interface should now say state up. And this lets us know that it is, you know, it's ready to roll. You know, it's ready to rock and roll. The interface is up and ready to be bridged. So the next step is to set the master so that way uh, the interface, whenever it receives packets, it knows to kind of use the bridge interface. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. sudo ip link set dev, then we're going to type in the interface that we're going to be connecting the bridge to, which in this case is this one here. Then we're going to say master, and then you're going to type in the bridge name you want to bridge it to, in this case, BR1. So we'll do that. Now when you run the address command again, the interface you just uh, told is the slave to BR1 should now say master BR1, like that. And yeah, that's basically it. The next step is to actually go into QEMU and uh, configure it. So yeah, pretty straightforward and pretty simplistic. If you ever want to remove the bridge, the simplest form is to actually run uh, sudo ip link set dev, type in the bridge name, or excuse me, type in the ethernet device, the ethernet or whatever interface is connected to the bridge, uh, no master. And this will actually remove uh, remove the thing here that says master BR1, it will no longer be a slave to BR1. So if you ever want to remove it, you can do that. And then remember to set the interface down after you do that. Uh, and then you can just easily do it. So say you did this and you didn't really, you know, you don't really want to mess with the bridges anymore, you just want to get rid of it. Uh, all you would do is, you know, set the master, no master on whatever interface is connected to the bridge. And then you do sudo ip link uh, delete dev and then BR1 and then that'll actually just straight up delete the bridge if you if you plan on not using the bridge again. Like maybe you just wanted to fool around with it and you're finished with it. Oh, so yeah, anyway, moving on, the next step is uh, actually telling QEMU to then use that bridge. Now, later versions of QEMU uh, have what's known as the QEMU Bridge Helper. And what the Bridge Helper does is it automatically sets up a tap interface. You see here if I do IP A D D R, you'll see that uh, there's actually already a tap zero. That's because uh, there's a really nice configuration in newer um, QEMU versions at, after QEMU 1.1 apparently. Uh, that there's this nice little kind of like script that'll go ahead and create a tap interface connected to the bridge for you so that way you don't have to create a tap interface if you want tap networking. Um, I also forgot to mention that I'm actually going to delete the uh, the master interface and the uh, bridge now because I already have one running. So let's just go ahead and delete it. I forgot to mention that um, one advantage to using this network style of a bridge network and using TAP is you actually you'll actually see improved network throughput on your VMs because it doesn't actually emulate that much anymore, you know what I mean? Instead of emulating uh, the E1000 
Intel drivers or the Realtek drivers, you now actually have the machine seeing the physical device, you know what I mean, like actually binding to it. So it cuts out a little bit of uh, emulation needed in it. In general, it's just a lot faster uh, from what I've heard. I haven't really benchmarked it myself, but I've heard that it's, it's quicker. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and remove the master from this because I've already have uh, a link set up with my VM machine. So we're going to go ahead, say no master, and we're going to delete, uh, we're going to delete the R1. So that's what it looks like once you delete the link you see here, stayed up, uh, then you see BR1 is down because I deleted it, and we're going to do... Uh, down, take the interface down. All right, this is just stuff I'm doing, cleaning up after myself. So yeah, once you have the bridge network up and all that up, the next step is to uh, go ahead and me personally, I launch my VMs from a shell script because I just find it a lot nicer. Uh, the next step is to actually uh, input the flags that are needed. So using the um, network bridge helper makes this super simple. Literally all you have to insert are these lines. That's it. And when you launch it, it'll go ahead and it'll do the rest for you. So the options are dash nic, or da excuse me, dash net, and the uh, f what you want to assign to that flag is nic, and then you add uh, dash net bridge comma br equals, and then the bridge name that you want the network to bridge to. And that's it. Um, incredibly straightforward, incredibly uh, simple. And then when you launch QEMU, it'll use the bridge helper to automatically set up a tunnel network for everything, so that way you can get, you know, tap, uh, which is really nice. Um, I also recommend uh, you, you, you're going to need KVM as well. Um, just make sure that if you're using the, you're going to want to use KVM anyway, honestly, if you have an Intel CPU, which, you know, if you use a modern Intel CPU, you should use KVM. KVM boosts your uh, uh, VMs a lot, and that's pretty simple to enable too. If you're on your Ubuntu server, you just got to make sure you add yourself to the KVM group, and then, you know, log in, log out, and then once you're in the KVM group, you can just launch it and it should work just fine. Yeah, but yeah, if you want to use, I recommend using KVM in my opinion, uh, because if you use KVM, you can then say, okay, use the C, use the CPUs, the host is CPU. So that way we're not emulating a CPU, we're actually using the host CPU. And that cuts down a lot of negative performance. You You will see a huge boost in VM performance once you use KVM with kind of native, uh, you know, uh, native CPU execution instead of having to emulate a lot of crap, right? Super good. I definitely, definitely recommend it. Okay. Kind of went on a rant about something that was a little irrelevant. I kind of digressed there for a bit. But anyway, yeah. Once you've added uh, these options here to your uh, QEMU uh, launcher, it's then time to launch your VM. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to actually shut the VM down because I have it running currently. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, SSH into it, kill it, uh, do as, shut down. I know a lot of people are thinking, OpenBSD, really? And it's actually, yeah, I've, I've been running this uh, OpenBSD VM for a little bit now. And so far I've been really impressed with the security in OpenBSD and how just bare bones and minimal it is. I think it makes a great operating system for the uh, for a virtual environment because it's so lightweight and kind of simple to set up um, but anyway yeah so I just shut down the VM and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna launch the VM now it's gonna open in curses sorry if you can't really read it oh yeah you can read it fine it's okay and then when you boot what you'll what you should see is uh, depending on what Oh, as you see here, it actually found the Intel device we're using. It doesn't have to emulate it, it's just getting it from the host through the bridge. Um, and it's now launching. See here, now of course each operating system is different in the launch, but you should eventually see uh, DHCP requests. And as you see, it actually just went to my modem. So the device is now actually visible on the network itself. So if you use any other computer on the network, 
you can go, oh, okay, ping, you know, 192.168.047, and, you know, it'll return because, hey, it's now visible on the network. Any device on the network can now see it as if it was an actual machine and not a VM. You know what I mean? You no longer have to, like, forward ports from the guest to the host to get every, all that set up. Now you can run services, i.e., a uh, web server directly from P, uh, directly from your VM and then use your VM's own kind of uh, packet filtering to kind of you know lock down the system obviously and then external systems can come in and access that service that your VM's running again as if it was a, just a regular machine and that's super awesome this is exactly what I wanted because I didn't want to have to kill my VM all the time and I wanted to be able to very easily access the machine and be able to kind of temper uh, mess around with things without having to kill it and then doing the host forward crap and then having to set up the firewalling from my server which already has a bunch of firewall rules you know what I mean more clutter so it's just I like this kind of containerized system better you know what I mean it's contained uh, in its own nice little way so once we log in here see we're now in open BSD and then we can go ahead I really need to set up an alias so that way when I execute sudo it does do as because that is something that is really messing me up all the time. So if we go ahead and then we're going to go ahead and go into our PF config here. This is kind of uh, ballsy. Maybe I shouldn't do this. But as you can see, I have my own firewall rules set up for uh, you know SSH access. And then yeah, so there you go. Uh, that's as straightforward as it is. You know, this works with, as far as I know, uh, this works with any type of modern uh, Linux operating system and even the BSDs, like OpenBSD supports it, you know what I mean? And, and I'm sure, I think NetBSD does as well, and I know FreeBSD does. As long as uh, that the operating system, the guest operating system has, I think it's Vert IO drivers or something like that, it will be able to utilize bridge networking. Um, I could be wrong on that, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure that that's all that's needed in order to run it. So yeah, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, yeah, pretty nice. And then that's it. Now, if we go ahead and we open, uh, I'm going to kind of demonstrate this for a little bit here. Down dash P. Now, we're going to go ahead and turn the system down. And then we're going to run it back in headless mode. I was only running it in cursor mode just so you guys can have a nice little interface and see what it looks like running, right? So, uh, let me shrink my font back down too. Jeez, that's really large. So, I'm going to go ahead. Oh god, what are you doing? God, I hate it when your terminal switches to, to Vim mode without you knowing. So I'm gonna turn off the display for the VM so that way it runs headless. And then we're gonna use, we're just gonna disconnect from it now. Disconnect from the server entirely. Uh, so now I just disconnected from my server. So now I'm running on my regular desktop and I'm waiting for OpenBSD to boot up because it will take a little bit. Um, OpenBSD does have a huge focus on security, so a lot of the stuff they're doing to ensure security does, unfortunately, in fact, uh, in, you know, put a somewhat of an impact on performance. Should also mention um, the Arch Wiki uh, mentions this as well. I should probably mention this too, but um, oh god, I fucked everything up. Uh oh, if you look at if you have multiple networks or multiple bridges, you're gonna want to make. You might have to set up uh, some other options, like it says here, with multiple taps. If you have multiple tap interfaces, uh, you will have to do a little bit more uh, finesse with the configuration with QEMU, the launching of QEMU, so that way it sees the right bridge. And you know, you might have to launch it as kind of like a VLAN emulator, which is really weird. Uh, but yeah, that's only if you have multiple taps and like say for instance if you have multiple uh, VMs that you're doing this for, you know, you have multiple VMs connected to multiple bridges, uh, you might have to set it up there. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, and then now, uh, OpenBSD should be, should be launched by now, definitely. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just make the font huge. We're going to SSH in to the, uh, to the VM here. And as you can see, the VM has an address. Uh, 
given to it by the modem. Yeah, and then we can go ahead and log in, clear it, and there you go. You now have uh, your VM visible to your network and also uh, visible to external networks. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, I was really excited about this when I got this working. It took me a little bit to kind of figure this out because I was trying to do some other crap. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just really awesome. So let's go ahead and run package add update it. Oh, crap. Yeah, I'm having networks down right now. Uh, probably because I was fucking around with the bridges. I might have put an interface down. But yeah, there you go. You get the idea that uh, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions or issues, make sure to leave a comment. And I'll try my best to answer them and help you guys out. So yeah, uh, it's glad to be. I'm glad to be back and making videos again. It's been quite a while since I've made a video. I think about three months. So yeah, a little rusty, right? I could have explained things a little better, but I was just kind of going for a quick and dirty guide. This uh, video is kind of assuming you know a little bit about uh, the networking, uh, networking shit, uh, fun stuff. Anyway. Take it easy. Uh, take it easy, guys. Uh, this has been Ghost Squad 57. Signing out.